alaikum everyone. This is Fadl Ansari and I'm here to help you conquer chemistry. In the previous video, we looked at ionization energy in a bit of detail, including the definition and the factors affecting ionization energy. If you have no idea what that is, go watch the previous video. Now, in this video, we'll look at how ionization energy values can help us determine electronic configurations. So, over here, we can see a table with six ionization energy values for the element carbon. with The proton number of six, so it has six electrons, so six ionization energy values. Now, we know that the simple electronic configuration of carbon is 2,4, two electrons in the first, and four in the second principal quantum shell. Now, first thing you will notice is that the ionization energy values across from the first all the way to the sixth, the ionization energy values are increasing. Now, what is the reason for that? So we know that the first four ionization energies from the first up till the fourth, these involve electrons in the second principal quantum shell because outer electrons are always removed first. Now, these first four ionization energies, their values are increasing. Why is that? The reason is that as you remove more and more electrons, the number of electrons left decreases, right? So, for example, if you remove one electron, you will have five electrons remaining, right? But you also have six protons in the nucleus, and you only have five electrons, right? But uh, when you did not remove that one electron, you had the six protons, but you had six electrons. Now, you can notice that these six protons have their work cut out when they have to attract all six electrons towards the nucleus. But if you have one electron less, once you have removed the first electron, you have only five electrons left for the same six protons to attract towards the nucleus, so it is easier to do that. And when it's easier to do that, the electrons will require more energy in order to be removed after that. So if the second electron is removed, then you still have six protons in the nucleus, but now you only have four electrons. So the work is divided between less electrons, and so all six protons can exert a greater attraction on each of these four electrons, which is less than five, which is less than all six. So all electrons feel more attraction and so need more energy to be removed. So that's why the ionization energies increase. Now the second thing you will notice is that between the fourth and the fifth ionization energies, there is a sudden increase. There is a sudden increase. Uh, initially you saw that uh, the increase wasn't that much. It went from a thousand and something to two thousand and something to four thousand and something to six thousand and something. But then, whoa, there's a sudden jump from six thousand and something to thirty seven thousand. That's a lot. And now, why is the sudden increase happening? It has everything to do with the factors affecting ionization energy. Again, watch my previous video if you don't know what those are. But I'll be listing them down over here anyway. So, First factor was distance of electron from the nucleus, right? So you know that these first four electrons were removed from the outer shell. The fifth electron will be removed from the first principal quantum shell. Now, when you're changing shells, the distance of the electron from the nucleus suddenly decreases. And the number of shielding electrons the number of shielding electrons also goes down, right? And the nuclear charge, meanwhile, still the same. You still have all six protons in the nucleus, right? But because of the fact that the distance suddenly decreases and the number of shielding electrons between the electron to be removed, which is the fifth, and the nucleus suddenly decreases as well, then... Uh, the ionization energy takes a sudden jump or a sudden increase. 
right? So that is why whenever you see a sudden increase between two consecutive ionization energies, such as in the case of the fourth and the fifth, then uh, you will know that you have changed shells. You have gone from an outer shell to an inner shell. So these are successive ionization energies of the same element, carbon. Now let's take a look at some trends. Now, the first trend, which is very easy, is down the group of a periodic table. So we have these three factors again. The distance of the outermost electron, the distance of the outermost electron will go up, right? Because when we move down a group, the number of electron shells or principal quantum shells increases, right? So the distance of the outermost electron or the first electron to be removed will increase. Remember these ionization energy trends that we're looking at are concerning only the first ionization energy. So keep this in mind. Second factor, the number of shielding electrons will also go up because the outermost electron is going to a shell further and further away from the nucleus. So the number of inner shells is also increasing and so the number of electrons between the outermost electron to be removed and the nucleus is increasing and the nuclear charge well surprise surprise that also increases but these two factors actually vote for decreasing the ionization energy right whereas this one factor alone is the guy voting for increasing the ionization energy. And in a democracy, these two guys will make sure that the decreasing ionization energy wins, right? And so you can see over here that uh, for group one elements, down the group as you go, you can see that the first ionization energy, it's given in kilojoules per mole, is going to decrease. So very simple trend first up down the group. Let's look at across the period. Now across the period, look at the same factors again. Distance of outermost electron. Now this, in this case, remain the same because in the period of a periodic table, the number of electron shells remains the same. So the outermost electron will be in the same principal quantum shell. So the distance does not change much in terms of shells. Number of shielding electrons will also remain the same. The only thing that changes is the nuclear charge, which increases. So, because this one and only factor, the first ionization energy will, what will it do? It will increase. All right. So the graph looks something like this. Now, this is the first ionization energies of the period two elements this is period two or the second row right of the periodic table and you can see that generally across this row the ionization energies are increasing but you will see that there are two blips in this pattern we'll see that over here when you go from beryllium to boron there's a slight dip over here and over here when you go from nitrogen to oxygen, there's a slight dip, right? They do not follow the pattern over here. Why is that? Now, let's take a look at that. So, for this dip over here, from beryllium to boron, beryllium has a proton number 4, electronic configuration of 1s2, 2s2, whereas boron, proton number 5, is 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. Right. So the outermost electron to be removed in boron is in a 2p subshell. Now the 2p subshell is slightly further away from the nucleus as compared to the 2s subshell from which the outer electron of beryllium will be removed. And this electron in boron being further away from the nucleus is also slightly shielded by the two electrons in the 2s subshell. 
The electron to be removed in beryllium, on the other hand, is only shielded by the 1s electrons. The electron to be removed from boron is shielded by 1s as well as the 2s subshells. So because of that, because of the slightly greater distance and the slightly more shielding, the ionization energy of boron, the first ionization energy, is slightly lower. All right. Again, there are two factors voting for decreasing ionization energy. Only one voting for the increase in ionization energy, which is the increased nuclear charge, but that has been outvoted. All right. So we know that distance of electron has gone up slightly and the number of shielding electrons, let's just write it as SE, has also gone up slightly and the nuclear charge has also gone up. But these two guys go for the ionization energy, first ionization energy going down and they win. All right. Now, for nitrogen to oxygen, you see this second dip over here. So what's the reason for this now? Now, nitrogen has an electronic configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. Whereas oxygen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. Now, if I were to write this in boxes, you'll see that 2p in nitrogen has three orbitals and we have one electron in each orbital. Whereas for oxygen, you have three orbitals. The first one contains two electrons and the other two contain one electron each. Now in oxygen, the electron to be removed, this guy over here, is part of a filled orbital. And when it's part of a filled orbital, there's going to be more repulsion within this orbital. And this is known as spin pair repulsion. The electron to be removed from nitrogen could be any of these three guys over here. Let's say it's this guy that has to be removed. Now, this guy is not encountering any repulsion within the orbital, but this guy over here, that needs to be removed from oxygen is encountering spin pair repulsion from within the orbital. It's because of this repulsion that it already contains a lot of energy and it does not need a lot of extra energy to be removed. So that is why oxygen has a lower first ionization energy than nitrogen. All right. Now, the rest of the period follows the same trend. Now, one thing more to note is that when you move from neon, that is the last element in period 2, to the first element in period 3, which is sodium, you'll notice that there is going to be a sharp decrease. Sodium will be somewhere way over here. And the reason is that sodium has three principal quantum shells. The first ionization energy will belong to an electron that is in the third principal quantum shell. So the distance, the distance has increased of that electron to be removed and the number of shielding electrons has also gone up dramatically and the nuclear charge, well, that has also gone up. But remember, these two guys are voting for a decrease in the first ionization energy and this is a democracy as we saw earlier. So these are ionization energy trends uh, down the group and across a period and how ionization energy values can help us determine electronic configuration. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like to subscribe to the channel and inshallah I will see you in the next video.